In this video, we'll be installing the Sargent 8715 Surface Vertical Rod Exit Device. Before beginning installation, be sure the device is handed correctly for the door. To determine the handing of the exit device, start by standing on the secure side of the door and identify the side of the door that the hinges are on. If the door swings towards you, it is a reverse bevel. Today's door is a left-hand door and we will be applying a right-hand reverse exit device. Finally, check the width and height of the door to ensure the device is correct. Next, gather all the tools you'll need for the installation. A measuring tape, a power drill, a set of drill bits, a set of taps, a Phillips number two screwdriver, a Phillips number three screwdriver, a level, a center punch, and painter's tape. Other tools may be required depending on your specific application. Now we can begin the installation of the Sargent 8715 device. Let's start by marking the vertical and horizontal reference line on the door. Measure the vertical reference line on the door based on the door style, also referred to as the A dimension in the installation guide. If the door style is four and a half inches or wider, then the vertical reference line will be two and three quarter inches from the door stop. If the door style is less than four and a half inches, then the vertical reference line will be half the exposed width of the door style when the door is closed against the door stop. Next, we will measure the horizontal reference line. For a standard rail center height of 41 inches above the finished floor, this line will be at 37 and 5 8 inches measured from the finished floor with the door closed. You may use painter's tape to assist with marking the reference lines on the door to avoid damaging the finish. Now that the reference lines have been marked, let's prepare the chassis area for installation. Start by aligning the template with the vertical and horizontal reference lines. Secure the template to the door using painter's tape. Once the template is secured to the door, identify the marking points needed for your application. Mark all needed points using a center punch. Depending on the door prep, you may need to mortise the shaded area down on the template to ensure the chassis sits flush against the door. Be sure the painter's tape is removed before installing the device. Drill all through holes and pilot holes as needed. For a wood door application, all through holes should have a pilot hole drilled from the inside of the door to ensure alignment and larger holes should be drilled from both sides of the door to avoid splintering. Depending on the application, the trim may also need to be mortised to ensure the exterior trim sits flush to the door. Next, attach the chassis to the door with the four provided screws. Do not completely tighten the screws as you'll need them loose to slide the rail onto the chassis. Now that the chassis is installed, you can attach the trim to the chassis using the quarter 20 flathead screws provided. With the trim and chassis in place, it's time to install the rail. Start by undogging the rail and using the provided 732nd Allen wrench. Slide the rail onto the chassis and secure with the provided number 8 32 by 3 8 Phillips screws. Do not completely tighten the screws, there will be some slight adjustments for later. Next, slide the mounting bracket onto the rail fully. With the rail leveled, secure the rail to the door. If this is a wood door, drill the pilot holes and use the provided wood screws to avoid splintering. If this is a metal door, it's suggested to drill and tap the holes for the provided number 10 24 machine screws. With the rail assembly secured and level on the door, it's time to tighten all the screws that were not completely tightened. Now that we're completed with the preparation of the chassis area, let's move to the top case. Start by folding the template along the dotted line. With the door closed, align the vertical center line on the template to the vertical reference line on the door. With the template folded at 90 degrees, the strike area on the template should be flush with the frame. Secure the template to the door and frame with painter's tape. Once your template is secured in place, identify and mark the holes needed on the door and frame for your application using a center punch. First, verify that the rail is not in the dogged position. Attach the threaded end of the top rod to the top case until the rod is snug. Do not over tighten the rod. Then slide the top rod into the main slide of the chassis. Using the holes we prepared earlier with the templates, attach the top rod case to the door. Unscrew the rod until the adjustment pin is located on the main slide of the chassis and it can be inserted through the rod. You should now be able to press on the rail to retract the top case latch. Next. We will install the bottom case and rod. This step also requires the rail to be in the undogged position. Attach the threaded end of the bottom rod to the bottom case until it's snug, but don't over tighten the rod. 
Slide the rod into the bottom main slide of the chassis until the hole of the rod is aligned. Insert the rod adjustment pin through the hole on the rod. Align the center of the bottom case with the vertical reference line. In this scenario, we'll be using a surface mounted strike. With your door closed, place the bottom strike in the position that will be installed and position the bottom case an eighth inch from the top of the strike to the bottom of the case and center on the vertical reference line. Mark and drill all holes needed for your application. Now let's attach the bottom case to the door. You should now be able to retract the bottom latch by pushing on the rail. Now that the device is installed on the door, let's install the strikes. First, we'll install the top strike in the holes that we previously marked with our template. Drill and tap if needed the marked holes. Use the provided screws for your application. For the bottom strike, transfer the vertical reference line to the floor as a center line for your strike. Be sure your strike engages with the bottom latch bolt and then align with the center line. Mark and drill those holes attached to your strike to the floor with the provided screws. With the strikes in place, now we can make adjustments to the top and bottom rod. There are two types of adjustments that can be made with each rod. First, for a larger adjustment, you'll need to change the hole used by the adjustment pin. Let's start with the fine adjustments that will be made by turning the rod into the top or bottom case to shorten or loosen out of the top or bottom case to lengthen. Once these adjustments have been made, be sure to replace the adjustment pin through the same hole that you started with. For our top rod adjustment, we will push on the door and rail simultaneously. Once the door opens, release the rail and the top bolt should be in the hold back position. If this is not the case, extend the top rod accordingly. For adjusting the bottom rod, extend the bottom bolt for maximum engagement with the bottom strike. When the top bolt is in the hold back position, it also holds the bottom bolt into the retracted position. Verify that the bottom bolt has an eighth inch clearance on the floor all the way from the close to open position. Once all adjustments have been made and we have confirmed the proper operation of the device, it's time to install the cover. Each cover will have four provided screws to secure them in place for the top case, bottom case, and the chassis. We can also install the end cap on the rail using the two provided screws to secure it in place. And last but not least, we'll install the rod guides. Install the top and bottom rod guides at the center of each rod. The rod should float freely throughout the guide without any rubbing or binding. Test the door from the outside to make sure there are no additional adjustments. And congratulations, you've installed the Sargent 8715 Surface Vertical Rod Exit Device. For more information, visit sergeantlock.com.